Let's take a look at the few of the operations we can perform with vectors. So one of the most basic operations that you can ever perform is addition. So I've written up a few vectors up here, u, v, and w, and I've given their component forms, the x and y components respectively, for each of those three vectors. So let's start by doing u plus v. If these were just regular old numbers that we're used to, we could just add straight across and call it a day. But because they're vectors, we need to make sure to keep track of them in component form. So I'm going to write u here, and then I'm going to write v, negative 1, comma 3, and then I'm going to add them. And when I add those vectors, I need to be sure to keep it in that component form. My final resultant vector is going to be the x component of u, 3, plus the x component of v, so plus negative 1. And this will be the x component of my resultant. If I want the y component, I take the y component of u, and I add it to the y component of v. Now these are just regular old numbers that I can add together. 3 plus negative 1 is going to give me 2. 2 plus 3 is going to give me 5. So I can say that u plus v will give you a vector that has an x component of 2 and a y component of 5. Now, you can do this algebraically, but because I've got this fancy graph paper here, let's go ahead and do it graphically as well. So I'm going to start by drawing out u. So I'm going to pick a starting place for u. u travels 1, 2, 3 to the right, and 1, 2 up. So here is the vector u. Now I believe I might run out of space just a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it down a little bit. It does not matter where you move these vectors to, as long as you've got your initial point and your terminal point, and they're 3 to the right and 2 up. So now I need to draw v. So again, doesn't matter where I start v. I'm going to go 1 to the left and 3 up. So here is my vector v. Here's the trick to adding vectors graphically. Is I'm going to teach you a method called the head to tail method. The head to tail method is when you draw your vector and you look at the head of that vector. So the head of u is right here. I'm going to take the tail of v and put it on that head, hence the name head to tail method. So now I've got one big old vector as we go through here. Move this u just a little bit out of the way. So my resultant vector, or my answer, is when I put my pen at the very, 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 very initial point, and then I put my pen at the very, 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 very terminal point, and I'm going to connect them. Your vector will always go from tail to head, the initial point to the terminal point. So this is me adding u plus v graphically. So we've got the component form out here. We've got the graphical form here. Let's see if they match. If I take this vector r, I can move 1, 2 to the right, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up. So this red vector, our resultant, has a component form of 2, 5. So this, in fact, does work. This is going to be how you're adding vectors using the head to tail method. Let's skip subtraction for just a moment, and let's instead look at scalar multiplication. So this out here is your addition. Scalar multiplication, though. Well, scalar multiplication sounds very familiar. You use scalar multiplication in matrices. So what happens when we scale a vector? Let's find out. So let's take the vector v, and let's scale it by a factor of 2. So again, let's go ahead and write these out in those component forms. 2 times negative 1, comma 3. Let me go ahead and get rid of this background for just a moment. So if I want to solve this, I'm going to end up distributing that 2. It's going to scale the x component and the y component. And we're going to end up with negative 2, 
comma 6. So this is our scaled vector. And now let's bring back these grid lines real quick to see how it's working graphically. I'm going to draw my original vector v. So v goes to the left 1 and up 3. So we go to the left 1, up 3, there is my terminal point. This is v. Now it's really easy for me to say, oh yeah, then you just scale it. So you take that and then you're going to drag it out to make it bigger. But let's think about what 2v is. 2v is really v plus v. So if I take my vector v and I add it to itself using the head to tail method, this is my vector 2v from the very, very, very initial point to the very, very, very terminal point. So 2v is going to travel 1, 2 to the left and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 up. So yeah, negative 2 comma 6 is the component form of 2v. Let's go ahead and label these vectors v and v. So there's a reason I skipped subtraction. Let's take a look real quick at what happens if I do negative 1 times v. So let's again turn off these backgrounds for a second, a little bit distracting. And let's do negative 1 times v. I'm going to, again, write it out in component form. So negative 1 times negative 1 comma 3. Now make a little hypothesis as to what you think will happen. It's always good to have an idea of what might happen. Now don't let that influence you. Don't try and make your answer be what you hypothesize. You always want to make sure that you're thinking about what it could be. But as you're doing the math, make sure you're following the math, not trying to fit into some sort of idea that you have. So when I actually go through and I multiply that negative 1, I'm going to end up distributing. And when I distribute, it'll be negative 1 times negative 1, giving me a positive 1. And negative 1 times 3, giving me a negative 3. Now that doesn't look very remarkable at first. But let's turn back on these grid lines, and let's take a look at what actually happened. Our original vector v goes 1 to the left and 3 up. Here's our original v. Negative v goes 1 to the right and 3 down. When you multiply by negative 1, what you're actually doing is you're flipping or reflecting that vector. If I move these on top of each other, it's exactly the same thing, except we've switched the head and the tail. So if you multiply something by negative 1, what you've effectively done is reflected that vector. So let me real quick section these guys off so we're not getting confused with what's going on. We've got our addition working on here. didn't give myself quite enough room to write out the word addition. We've got addition here. We've got scalar multiplication, which also leaks a little bit into here. This is scalar multiplication as well, but we're just proving a little bit of a point. Here's where we're going to look at subtraction. And those of you who are kind of thinking about what subtraction is, you might already have figured out what I'm going to do here. So this time, I feel like W is feeling a little bit unloved. So let's do U minus W. And let's think about what minus means. Because when we subtract something, it's just like saying U plus negative W. So now we've turned a subtraction problem into an addition problem and a scalar multiplication problem. And let's see how that works. Let me get rid of this background for just a moment. I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Let's go ahead and start by writing out the component form for u. 3, 2, 
and then we add that to the scalar multiplication. So we want to do negative 1 times w, 4 comma negative 2. Now we're going to still follow that order of operations. PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, whatever it is that you know that by. We want to make sure that we're doing the scalar multiplication first. So we end up still with that 3, 2. We haven't changed the white u vector. But here's where we're going to distribute across. And we're going to get negative 4, positive 2. So we add a negative 4 and a positive 2. Now I put this positive here just to accentuate that it has changed into a positive 2, but really it's not necessary if you don't want it on there. Now that we have just a simple addition problem, we're going to follow through like we did on our regular addition. You add those components, so we end up with 3 plus negative 4, which gives you negative 1, and 2 plus 2, which gives you a positive 4. So our resultant vector should be pointing 1 to the left and 4 up. Well, let's turn on those grid lines and see if we're correct. So we're going to start by doing vector u. Vector u again points 3 to the right and 2 up. So we're going to go 3 to the right. Here's my initial point, 1, 2, 3, and 2 up. So initial to terminal and we're going to add negative w. So I'm going to start, let me label this just so we don't get lost here. I'm going to start with the vector w. w goes 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 2 down. 4 to the right and 2 down. But we're not looking at w, we're looking at negative w. And what we just discovered with scalar multiplication is you're going to take this vector and you're going to reflect it, rotating it 180 degrees. So this now is going to be negative w. And when you add vectors using the head to tail method, you're going to take the head of u and you're going to place it on the tail of w. So right there. And my resultant vector is where I put my pen on the very, very, very initial and the very, very, very terminal. And we're going to go from initial point to terminal point. This is my resultant vector, which if you decide to count it out, is 1 to the left and 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So whether you do it graphically or algebraically, you can add, subtract, and scalar multiply with vectors. So as a quick recap, whenever you add vectors, make sure that you add only those x components together and only those y components together. If you're going to do it graphically using the head to tail method, you can start with your vector, and then you look at the head of that first vector, and you place the tail of the second vector onto it. If you're adding six or seven vectors, always continue with that head to tail. So if I were to add another vector here, I would start that vector here. This would be the initial point of my other vector, all the way to the terminal point of that vector, so on and so forth. Your resultant vector will always be from your very, very, very initial point to your very, very, very terminal point. For scalar multiplication, you're going to distribute that. It scales the vector. So here we had a vector v. When we multiplied it by 2, we scaled it by a factor of 2, making it bigger. If we wanted to make it smaller, you could divide it by 2 or multiply by 1 half. That'll scale it down. Using scalar multiplication, you can also multiply by negative numbers. And When you multiply by a negative number, it reflects that vector. So what was pointing up and to the left is now pointing down and to the right. You can mix these two, and you can multiply by negative 2, which would reflect the vector and make it twice as big. Lastly, we used these ideas of addition and scalar multiplication to be able to do uh, subtraction using vectors. So if you have subtraction using vectors, personally, I find it easiest to go ahead and change it into addition problem, u plus negative w. Well, we know negative w means that you reflect w. So graphically, you can take that w, reflect it, 
and then still add using the head to tail method. If you're doing it algebraically, you can simply distribute just like we did with scalar multiplication, and then add just like we did with normal.